Welcome back to my Zone 3 Minnesota garden and it is October now. I am just getting ready to power down the garden as we have some freezing temperatures right around the corner. But what I thought would be fun would be to take a travel back in time to the very beginning of how this garden started. This is a unique gardening space for me because it's brand new so I didn't know what to expect and we had to put in this garden fast. So we made it a family affair, Ryan helped, my parents came up and we got this whole garden put in in just one day and only for $200. There were definitely some challenges along the way, some unexpected things. Not everything went according to plan, but it never does, right? So come along for the journey and I'll show you how we put this awesome garden space in. I knew I wanted a rough garden size of 50 by 25 so the first thing I did was grab a tape measure and roughly laid it out. I used leftover flags from our dog's invisible fence from our last property to mark the corners. Then Ryan, my handy engineer husband, joined me and helped me to make sure that the space was absolutely square. What we were looking for when deciding on where to place the garden was a location that had full sun exposure yet is still close enough to the cabin that we could string a few hoses together to water it when needed. There was a slight slope here, but we tried to find the flattest section that we could. Next up was mowing the space using a pretty short setting and we decided to use our push mower so that we could bag the greens and especially those seed heads so I would hopefully not have to deal with as many weeds in my garden later on. Mowing also reduced the overall amount of mass that we'd have to deal with later on once we got to the tilling part. Before tilling we were planning on using a sod cutter to reduce my weeding later on as well but our soil was rock hard clay so the sod cutter just kind of bounced over the top. So we scrapped that idea fast and just went straight to piling compost directly on top of the area that we had just mowed. I got all of this amazing organic composted cow manure from my local raw milk farm for just a hundred bucks. I was so thrilled to find it. Next up was tilling everything in. I was so glad to have Ryan's help because those machines are heavy. But do you notice that green corner over there? We were a little short on compost and unfortunately my raw milk farm was two hours away. So my mom and I took off and ran to go get some bags of compost, but the nearest gardening center was still 45 minutes away. The joys of remote living, I suppose. There you can see the new compost is very dark, but actually this section of my garden ended up growing the worst. Composted cow manure from my raw milk farm for the win. You may be noticing us throwing a lot of rocks. Yep, we found a lot of rocks in my garden. So our game plan was to have Ryan go ahead with the tiller while dad and I followed behind to pick out all the rocks. And as far as tilling goes, I always use no-till methods once the garden is in, but for that initial groundbreaking, I think it's an invaluable tool, especially with how rock hard my soil was. So because of this, we don't own a nice rear tine tiller. We just rented one for a hundred bucks for the day, which was another reason why we were in such a rush. My parents even brought their RV with so that we had a place to eat and go to the bathroom since we didn't have access to the cabin yet. It was such a blessing to have them there. And my mom did such a great job filming everything. Thanks, mom. The tilling definitely took the longest. Ryan ended up needing to do three full passes to break up all the clay. There were definitely some big rocks in there. This part was actually kind of fun. I enjoyed digging for rocks with my dad and we couldn't have asked for a better weather day except for all the mosquitoes. They were pretty terrible. Now that everything was loose, it was time to create the planting rows. I laid out flags in rows four feet apart and then my secret weapon is to bring the topsoil from the walking paths up onto the planting rows because why waste that good soil on the walking paths, right? Plus it's going to help with drainage in my clay soil. 
Look at how nice everything looks. It's looking like a real garden now. We got my electric poultry netting partially set up, but since nothing was planted yet that needed protecting, the mosquitoes were fierce and it started to rain. So we waited to finish that until another day. And here is my garden now in early October. We've actually already had a couple of frosts, but I'm just honestly so pleased with how everything has turned out, especially how quickly we threw it in. I didn't have time for soil testing or any of that. So if you'd like a detailed tour of my garden, I have three different garden tour videos on my YouTube page. I'll make sure to link them below so you can check them out. Some other things that I did to this space is I ended up mulching with organic straw. I recommend getting organic straw because it's not gonna be sprayed with any herbicides or anything that you definitely don't want in your garden. So I just went on Facebook Marketplace, found a local farm, and it's a great way to support your local farms as well. So it really kept the weeds at bay. I haven't weeded in months, and this is all I have. It's really not too bad. And then the weeds that are there are really easy to pull up because they're not fully rooted into the soil. And it's really not too expensive. I think I probably spent 30 bucks on the straw for my entire garden space. So it was about three bales and I think they're about 10 bucks each. And then the walking paths, I did plain cardboard. We had a lot of cardboard from moving and that has just really saved the day and given me more time to dedicate to just moving into this place instead of spending it on weeding the walking paths. There are a couple spots where I did not mulch and you can see there are a lot more weeds. So here I just never quite made it. Definitely a lot more. Now with straw, there's typically gonna be some seed heads in there that will initially sprout. That's what these grass looking things are, but they're super easy just to pull up. See, they're just, they sprout within the straw. So you can almost just lift the straw and all of it comes up. So no big deal. And then as far as this fencing goes, that was not part of the cost because I already had it on hand. So I've been using electric poultry netting to protect my garden for eight years now, and it works so, so well. Highly recommend. This is how we make a little gate. We just kind of bring the two ends together and then I'll loop this end in here. It's kind of hard for me to do it one-handed. There we go. So you can see how I have it looped together. I used to battle deer and raccoons eating everything. Haven't had a single issue of that type of a critter. Now the burrowing ones like gophers and moles may, you know, that's a whole other issue, but this works great. And if you'll notice, I'm also using it for my chickens. We have a lot of predators out here and we're doing quite well. So love this and you can power it by solar. You can do plug-in. I'll make sure to link it below. I also love that it's adjustable. So as I grow my garden every year, I can just string it out a little bit wider. And it's easy to set up, easy to take down. We always take it down every fall, so you don't want to leave it out all winter. Um, but it only takes us about 30 minutes together to set it up every spring. The other fun challenge since being here is all the iron in our water. Do you see how our my nice white pretty poles are now orange? So that's been another fun battle that we've been dealing with here. Anytime I would water my garden, the plants would turn brown and it was just eh, unsightly and overall, I was noticing some stunted growth when I was watering a lot. So just another challenge here. Nobody has a perfect garden space, but just have to do the best you can with what you've got. Well, that was really fun to look back and kind of go through it all again. I feel like it happened in such a blur and it really was. It was kind of this frantic rush to get the gardens in and everything planted because our growing season is really short and here in Minnesota. And so I'm glad that it all worked out well. The garden is thriving. And if you wanna get into gardening or if you've started to garden and things aren't going so well, I would love to help you. <laughs> Mabel wanted to join. Hi, little girl, you wanna say hi? This is Mabel, she's one of our barn kitties. So what I was gonna say is I have a garden planning course that will absolutely walk you through all these foundational steps into creating a thriving and productive space. So I would love to have you. I will drop all the information below and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks so much for being here and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you get more self-sufficiency tips from me and just come along on the journey as we build out this new homestead space. Mm -hmm.